All right, hello everybody. It's Godojo Tutorials here. Uh, I'm here to explain shaders and the basics of getting into learning to write your own shaders and what these two are. Uh, so I'll start by explaining what a shader is uh, and how they really work. So the first thing that you need to know is a shader is a piece of code that lives on the graphics card that runs per uh, vertex or fragment. Uh, I don't really touch the lighting shader, so can't explain it too much right now, but uh, a per vertex is going to be per uh, vertice of a mesh. So each point on a 3D mesh, uh, this little piece of code is going to execute on uh, those points. And you have access to a bunch of different variables, so you can affect these points in different ways. Uh, it's just to say that shaders aren't just for shading, they can do more than that. Uh, but they do do shading, and for the most part, we're going to be shading them in the fragment shader, uh, which is run per fragment, uh, which means per pixel. Uh, so I have this right down here as the most basic shader I could think of, and this is a scrolling shader. Uh, it just scrolls this background over and over and over. Uh, and the way it does this is it's affecting something by time and speed, right? So let's, let's go in and explain it. Okay, so in here, what is this object? This is just a sprite node with, um, with this as like a, a, a background texture. Uh, the thing is, if we do this, we can still change the texture and it's still the same background color. So, you know, what's the deal with that? You know, what's, you know, what's going on? Well, what's really happening is that this texture is, you know, whatever texture is on this sprite is largely ignored and in favor of that is drawn over with the shader. So shaders will take precedent over what is shown on that sprite. Um, uh, just because, you know, that's the final say. The, the shaders are like a chain of code that runs when it's rendering everything. So, how does this work? Uh, this is a different language than GDScript, so in it's not even going to use the same real conventions as that uh, scripting language. So, it's its own GLSL homebrew of weird shader code, and this is going to change, I'm pretty sure, with 3.0 coming out soon. Yeah, okay. So these shaders are gonna change uh, with 3.0 coming out. Uh, I'm just using 2.1 stable right now. Uh, so I believe, yeah, this is just gonna change. Yeah, which is gonna be a lot nicer. You're gonna want that. Um, but for right now, I'm just gonna like point you to the documentation and in shaders part two, I'll go into the new shading language once it's all done. Um, so, this scrolling background, how does it work? Why is it working? And what are these variables right here? So this is where the actual texture gets set. If you want like a thing, like a big Godot face to... One second. Yeah, there he is. If you want that, you can do that. Uh, but why isn't that scrolling properly, right? That's weird, because we don't have this on. So you need to use your repeat flags and texture flags for this. So, go into the texture, Turn on your repeat flags if you want. You can turn on mirrored repeat. Not that that's going to make a difference on this logo too much, but you know, a mirrored repeat will just repeat it in the you know other directions. So if we grab maybe that's a little bit more obvious. Put this back to normal, and instead, if we change it to mirrored repeat, we're going to see all the clouds come in uh, the other way, which is not overly useful for this scene, but. Oh, but that may be useful for other scenes if you, if you need to. So, to explain how this is working. So, when the Godot face pops back, uh, that popped back the first time there, that was because of this modulus operator inside this little vector. Now, whoa, what am I talking about? So, what is this line anyways? This is where we're setting the color uh, of the pixel at each pixel. So, it's just saying, you know, Look at this texture, BG texture, at this location and rip the RGB values from it and stick them in this one. So 
it's starting at this UV coordinate. So this is a global, or not a global, it's a constant UV coordinate, which is the, um, which is just the UV of wherever you are on this. So to go over quickly what a UV is, it's uh, points that are, it's 2D points associated with points on a mesh. Uh, and so each of these points will have a different UV of between zero to one. Uh, so basically it's zero, zero, uh, it's, what is it, one zero, one one, and zero one, right? Uh, and that's going to be the case for most 2D UVs, uh, in, in Godot at least. And UVs will be a lot different in 3D, uh, so watch out for that because each point will have its own specific one, uh, which is to help it stretch the texture over these points properly. Kind of like a, like a weird rubbery wrapping paper, something. So... It's just saying go to the natural UV of wherever this pixel is. So don't, you know, don't do anything too crazy, but add this vector two, which is, uh, has no change in the Y value. So it's just adding an X value to it, uh, which is the modulus operator of times, or it's time multiplied by uh, the speed. So we can shove whatever speed we want in here and it'll just scroll at whatever speed uh, because it's going to be changed by the time. Now this modulus operator is what made the Godot face pop back into place because if we don't have that, then it's just going to go forever. Uh, so this is my first attempt in fixing uh, most of this code. Uh, this actually doesn't make a difference if you have your repeat flags on, um, but I like to keep this, uh, this value right here. When I'm doing operations with it, I don't want to add anything too much like two crazy big numbers because I'd rather keep all the operations with smaller numbers, some numbers between zero and one. So this limits this value, the modulus operator limits this value to uh, be between zero and one. It doesn't clamp it, it just kind of, it wraps it. Um, so, but if we don't have the repeat flag on, we, we will get weird stretching effects, uh, which no fun, so, you know. It'll just start ripping the last pixel and stretching that all the way across. So now if we go back in to this shader, there's not too, too much to explain more about this uh, apart from it, it, that it's really necessary that we do set an RGB value in the fragment shader. Okay, so looking at the water shader, this... Uh, is just the single pix pixel texture that I have stored in there. And I've scaled it up to whatever size I want this water plane at. Um, now, this looks awfully familiar to the you know, scrolling background, except for it's got this displace factor, and it's got a height variable. So all it's doing is it's scrolling two images across. It's scrolling two displacement maps, which are just you know these purpley bluish maps, which are storing information about like a wave, because uh, this is these are water displacement maps. So it's just saying uh, you've got this like, you know, here's your texture. It's kind of just like saying, oh, at this point, the wave is pointing this way. And as I kind of curl over, the wave is going to, you know, bend over um, and, and, and arc and, and keep waving, right? So it's just saying that like at any of the points, this is pointing directly out from the wave, directly uh, perpendicular to the wave at that point. That's what it's trying to explain. Now you can search up displacement maps uh, and you'll see a bunch of different kinds of things. Uh, they are just used for, or like normal maps, they're just used for, uh, you know, changing some vectors of uh, reflections and, and whatnot, which is exactly what I'm doing. So I'm using these color values to say, okay, move the reflection this way a little bit, this way a little bit. Uh, which is what's giving it this water effect. Uh, so that's the overall concept of this shader. I'm not going to go too far into the math of it because it's not that much math. Well, I'm not going to go too far into it because it's it's mostly just the same stuff as setting color values. Uh, but I'll just go over the lines quickly that I think are most important. So right in here, well, to start up here, all in here, these are just the uniform values that are found right there. So, you know, no difference from the other shader there. These lines where I'm setting the offset and the, you know, D1, D2, 
I'm just getting the color value at the at both of the textures points um, at this time. So now I kind of know which way that this this uh, reflection should be pointing. Uh, right here, what I'm saying is, um, okay, right. Now this is the most uh, important um, function call of this entire shader because it's saying to look at the screen's UVs and the, the this texture of the screen before uh, this was all done rendering. So it the, just, just a little bit before the water was done, it's gonna look at whatever that looked like. So we can take this object and put it above the water and it won't be touched by the water reflection. Right? Oh, wrong one. And if we put it back, it goes back. And that's the same if we change the Z value or Z value. So back into the shader, we've got... Okay, so this text screen call is at this UV, which I'm calling RUV, which is the um, reflection UV, which says, you know, use the natural screen X UV. So it's not going to reflect to the side. Uh, you could use it to reflect to the side if you change this math around. But it's just saying, you know, as you go down, uh, as you go down here, you're going to start looking at the screen from the top edge of this and upwards. Um, and then right here is saying, oh yeah, and also add the reflections in, which is the first reflection map subtracting the second reflection map. Uh, and both of them are, you know, they each have how much you can reflect them by, which are generally variables set pretty low to give this like small wavy effect. If you crank those factors up, the, the reflections go crazy, uh, which I can show you. So if we, you know, bring it up to one, it goes a little bit nuts. So keep those values low and it'll just shift the, uh, the reflections by a little tiny bit, which is nice. So in here, I don't need this line. So down here, oh, maybe I do. Okay, so down here, I've got, I set the color to black, which whatever this color of the sprite used to be, it's now black. Uh, now I'm adding the um, color of the, the reflection, which is whatever's at, you know above the water. Uh, and I'm just making it a little bit darker. And I'm changing, I'm making it darker as it goes into the distance as well. And in here, I'm saying, oh, and can we add a little bit of a bluish color uh, multiplied by an inverse dot product of the two displacement uh, vectors at this point? So it's, I'll make a vector math video. I'll explain what that does, this, this kind of stuff. It's a big topic, so it's more like how perpendicular the two vectors are. It's going to return an inverse value and shift the color based on that, so whatever. I'll go into dot products and, and more interesting vector functions later on. But the most important thing now is that we can also set an alpha value for this. So this you can just figure out whatever colors you want to add based on some math or whatever, uh, and that's fine. In here, we can actually set the alpha value of this. So instead of making it completely solid, which we could if we commented this out, it's giving us a little bit of transparency onto this, like uh, this sand right here, right? So this is an effect called the Fresnel effect, and it's as you look down at something reflective versus if you look across it, it'll it'll have different reflective properties. Uh, being more see-through as you're more straight down and, and more reflective as it's more grazing across. So this is just saying, use an inverse uh, function of a parabola uh, of the UVs. So, all right, put a parabola on the screen because this is a squared function. Or like this is, you know, X squared, basically. Parabola, now flip it. That's the alpha value. Of, uh, of this, which is, I think it, it gives a pretty good effect. So you can change this to something else if you want to do more of like a, I don't know, 
Okay, but if you want to do like linear fall off, you can do something like this, which you'll see now we can see more in here uh, because now it's a linear function like that or something. So now it's just doing that. Put a linear function on the screen, flip it. That's the alpha value. Now, if we don't flip it, it's just like this. We'll go the other way. Right? And that's why we're flipping it. I'll put those back how they were. Sounds good. All right, now some people may have noticed this effect, this tearing right here, which is the same tearing effect that we saw on the background. We can't really avoid this one too much because it this is limited to the text screen uh, function. We can't go into the negative UV of a text like of the screen because that's not being rendered. I haven't seen too many ways around that that problem, so uh, what I would suggest is just keeping this on the lower half of the screen instead of trying to make uh, pawns that are reflecting things that don't exist. You could make a little, you could say, okay, reflect this texture instead of reflecting the screen, but then you're not going to get um, this real time uh, moving objects reflecting with it. Um, that's all. So, oh, there you go. There is the water effect. Hopefully, this has helped you guys with, you know, some aspect of shaders or introduce you to something interesting and new. Uh, if you have any questions or you want me to explain something further, please leave a comment. I'm not doing too much else, so let me know. Alright, thanks guys.